Let's be Rick and Daytona. Welcome. Come on, Kevin. Let's do it. The 500 is the hottest ticket in town, and 2007 winner Kevin Harvick is one of the stars of the show. It's his seventh season with powerhouse team Stuart Haas Racing. When you look at the Daytona 500, it is our biggest race, and it's unique because it is our first race. Everybody's enthusiasm level is very high because we haven't run a race yet. Daytona has meant a lot to our sport, obviously, in building it into what it is today, and that's the reason that the Daytona 500 is what it is. So winning at Daytona is, is pretty special. Since their last win in 2017, Stewart Haas have two new drivers and have switched from Chevrolet to Ford. For team boss Tony Stewart, pre-race is a busy time. It's very nerve-wracking from the owner's side too, to sit there and know that you got four cars in the race uh, and, and that anything can happen at any time. Uh, I always like being in the car and being in control, but it's uh, a little easier to be outside the car and be on the pit box instead and watching what's going on versus being in the car. Daytona Speed Weeks includes 10 days of racing and qualifying. Among six first-timers, SHR new boy Cole Custer qualified 12th. We've had an awesome car all weekend. All the guys on the team have given me a, a great car to work with, so I'm looking forward to it. Take it one step at a time, and hopefully we can make it to the end of the thing. The 14-car crew were looking to deliver Clint Boyer his first victory in his 15th 500 attempt. Man, all the stars are lining up. All four Stuart Haas cars are fast. Looking forward to the Great American Race, the Daytona 500. We're ready. It's probably the hardest automotive race that we face all year in NASCAR to win. And you know, you spend the most time preparing for it. It has one of the biggest paydays, and it's the most prestigious race. We just can't wait to get down here and try to win the Daytona 500. While the crews prep the cars, the drivers have media engagements to attend. But on the eve of the 500, thoughts always turn to the big race. I've come so close to winning this race before, uh, literally a half a lap away from winning. So 2020, it's the year we're going to get it done. Race day and the arrival of President Trump as Grand Marshal signified the size of the occasion, and there were plenty of stars on hand. Everybody's super psyched for this. I know the drivers are on edge because this, this is the WrestleMania of NASCAR for them. It is packed to the rafters, but these are hardcore racing fans right here. 500 miles lay ahead as the great American race got underway, but after only 20 laps, the heavens opened. We've been waiting for a week and a half to run this race and in all off season, and then to get all pumped up and make a few laps and then have the rain come. It's just long enough to stop us for a couple hours. We're getting to that point where it looks like there's some more rain building, so we need to get this thing to the end and see if we got a shot at it. Two hours was quite an underestimate, but just the second time in cup history, the race would be completed on a Monday. The 62nd Daytona 500 is underway. The early stages were dominated by Hendrick's Chase Elliott, but while the other SHR Mustangs ran lower in the order, Arik Almarola took third at the stage one flag. Lap 85 saw Kevin Harvick sustain damage in an incident involving BJ McLeod and Quinn Hoof, but the Stuart Haas pit crew kept all four cars in with a chance until late in the race. The big one struck with less than 20 laps to go. Here's the big one. Man. Well, there goes half the field. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Hopes in his final Daytona 500. And here's Eric Almarola, one of the fastest Fords in this entire field, all torn up. The pileup sent the race into overtime and an extra two lap shootout to decide a winner. But it was halted when Clint Boyer span out. Teammates Harvick and Boyer would eventually finish in the top 10 when the second two laps of overtime got underway but the race was overshadowed by Ryan Newman's horrific crash within sight of the finish line. Denny Hamlin became only the fourth driver in NASCAR history to win back-to-back -back Daytona 500s, but everyone's thoughts were with Newman, who remains in hospital with serious, but thankfully non-life-threatening injuries.